So we're here with Palais Royale, but I, I only want to hang out with the dogs. So <laughs> interview is over. No, just right? Thank That's you fine. all for your time. Look at this beautiful thing. First of all, doggy headphones are a thing. You they, taught me that. Yeah. I did not know that was Doggy a thing. headphones because Very you know, sensitive if ears. fireworks are bad for dogs, then why isn't it a rock concert? I agree. Especially I saw a dog guitar. yesterday. Peta, especially should be your his spokesperson. guitar, it would ruin her life. Oh yeah. my god. She's so these are rebel-y. the headphones? I think she wants them off right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the Let's pup comfortable. Let's get you comfortable. I know you don't want to have these. It's turned into a Petco interview. <laughs> Pretty much. So cute. Well, Great. we have to talk about. This is our life. You were recently arrested. Everybody's yes. talking about you. <laughs> Breaking news. Has to do with the pup, or maybe not this pup. I don't know. Tell us the story. So, um, my dog had to go to the bathroom. I went and got a coffee. I bought a salad as well. And in that moment, the salad was going to take 10 minutes. I was like, I should take my dog out. Walked across the street and... Where were we? Worcester? Worcester. And she was going to walk herself. She's you know, more than capable. <laughs> and I pick her up in the middle of traffic and this guy just speeds up and like tries to hit me. And I pick up my coffee and I throw it in his car. But in Massachusetts, all, unfortunately, it's a assault with a deadly weapon. How it's is coffee serious. a deadly and weapon? Sorry if I don't swear, but I'm very, very heated about it. Yeah. But I went to jail, and that was hard. Um, but His unfortunately, bail was forty dollars. It was forty dollars from my loss. The my lawyers, lawyer was though, like a hundred times that, and it's gonna keep on going up and up because they didn't take my statement. So when the cops came, this guy's like, he saw. Unfortunately, we were playing outside. I was outside the venue, and they saw the marquee. So when the guy saw that, he's like, I was like, I'll pay for your car. It's fine, whatever it is. And he's like, no. You're gonna have to pay for this shit. You're getting arrested. And I was like, he calls the cops. I'm inside the venue. Go outside. And the cops like, is this the guy? And the guy's like, I'm going to have to arrest you. Unfortunately, that you must press charges. And they put me in the back of the cop car. And it wasn't a cop car. It was a cop van that with no windows. My hands behind my back, up against the wall, feet straddled into the ground, and my neck up against the thing. Like, like I. It's like I just was like Hannibal Lecter. They were like treating me like that. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And then no, I go we, to jail we and got I a thought. Call from him. We were, we were pretending not to pick him up, and we were gonna leave him in there till midnight. No, you were not. It was so funny. Because I told him the story. I told the people at the jail. You guys are great Bastion. brothers, by the way. Sebastian yes, kind of has been a dick to us, you know, at moments in our lives, and this was like, oh my god, we don't even have to do anything. He's sitting in a cell. This is like payback. We're gonna leave him in there until midnight, and then our mom calls, like, you go pick your brother up from jail. <laughs> He's like, you can't leave him in there. And they're it, like, Fine. it was miserable. It was like, but now we've just released uh, mugshot shirts, yes. which is available. Link in bio so you on can pay for a lawyer. So your misery turned into a merch opportunity. I was it's always a merch it. opportunity. It's I heard Corey Taylor wants one. So Cor- oh, Corey Taylor, like. If he Taylor's wears it, one. we're going to sell a lot of those shirts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely send one to him. Um, let's talk about the funeral tour. Yes. And what's that about? You guys are kind of saying like the end of an era. So talk to us about it. Um, the funeral tour, it's it's kind of like the final the final couple shows of us playing um, a lot of Boom Boom Room, Side A and Side B. Oh, my God. She never stops. We're very excited about it because... We haven't told our story after the fact of us seeing the world and the stories we've been, you know, kind of like you know all the all the shit that we've been through and you know we're we went just from being homeless, we went from being living in a car, traveling the world, and you know now it's like we can go to London and play like massive two thousand cap rooms and go to Amsterdam. And people are waiting like days on end to after it's like so when you go from that, it's like really exciting and we're just excited for the new chapter to like start so, showing this world that we've now been living in. Yeah, so. this this is just kind of like our final goodbye. You're the second band who's talked to me about being homeless. Yeah. What was that period like? So we uh, we were very stubborn. We didn't want to sign to anyone at the time being. We had our eyes set no, on No, we us wanted or, to sign to no, anyone. We just well, we, weren't no, getting offers. At, at the time, <laughs> at the time that we were supposed to be with someone that was like Get really em. great, but they we weren't re- that important to them obviously when it came to it so we were waiting on them and Samarian came along and they offered us a record deal I'm like we have to accept we're living in our mom's car like on they were living in a motel and that was like in those moments when you have nothing you learn a lot about yourself and we were living in a motel in uh like studio city yeah uh, room six (laughs) the el patio inn we were living there for at least a month and i think we had maybe a couple days left 
before we were going to get kicked out and just like completely be on the streets. But I feel and like if, luckily, if you don't struggle, you don't grow. Yeah, and we, I think in those moments was such an important uh, learning experience for us in our lives and musically and artistically. So yeah, so it shows in our art now. We literally got, um, we were playing a high school like at lunchtime and uh, you know, this record company came out and they signed us that day and we're like, okay, we just need a couple hundred dollars to, you know, pay for this motel and he gave us a check for a thousand dollars. I'm like, oh my God. We're rich. I'm like, this is it. We made it. We're really not hiding behind anything anymore. We're just kind of showing our true colors. Do you feel like you have a lot of anxiety? Oh yeah, all the time. And you know, I hear that so often from yeah. band members in general. And I wonder, how do you like go on stage in front of thousands that's, of people? That's yet? the safe place. It's funny because that, that is it the safe place. Sense, it, though, it's like, dealing that, with like the normal confrontation of life is like it stresses me out, you know. But everything just, else, it, it's funny because I always say, you know, the stage is my therapy, you know. So I kind of get all my shit out up on there, and it's like we we want to like instill on these kids, you know. There, it's important to have an outlet or you're gonna go crazy because you know if I didn't have this I don't think I'd have anything and that's what we're trying to get across it's like it's you know it's okay to be a little crazy but it's good to get it out like any form of self-expression like art poetry music you know and like our lovely royal council which which we call of our fan base uh, like they t constantly tell us that like they've gotten back into artwork or something or like they've been writing a lot more that warms our hearts because it's like inspiring. I think that's so important to find a safe place, like in a sketchbook or in music, because yeah. this world is a bit crazy at the moment. I hear that. Yeah, because there's there's so many kids out there that you know are very similar to us when we were growing up. You know, antisocial, you know, filled with anxiety, and you know, we just want to let them know they're not alone, and uh, that's what our kind of our, our songs are about, just being very honest about what we went through, and hopefully, we can help a lot of them.